And now, Minion Works presents Freelance Heroism. Hey everybody, I'm Deese. And I'm Rachel. And we just want to take a minute to say thank you to everyone that helps put out the blah blah blah, you know the thing. But this is not a standard episode. This is not... Um, uh, one of our normal releases. This is going to be a review episode. Rachel, what are we reviewing? Uh, this week we are reviewing Oz Digs Himself Out by Ron Baxley Jr. Fantastic. I know this guy. He's super awesome. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. So we did get a review copy and I read it because I was really excited to read a new book by an author I haven't read before. This is a young adult book, I would say. You can get it on Amazon for $12.99. So if you, maybe if you are still doing some last minute Christmas shopping, like I always am, and you, maybe if you have like a niece or nephew or someone who likes to read, you know, maybe by the end of this review, this might be something that you might want to pick up for them. Or even after Christmas, I know a lot of times people get uh, Amazon gift cards and things like that. Oh yeah. If you're looking for something to spend money on, Mm -hmm. local artists and creators hey yes indies man support your indies uh so oz digs himself out is about oz digs the seventh who is the descendant of oz the great and terrible wizard from yeah wizard of oz the wizard of oz yes um and his family has been cursed by the wicked wish of the west so Mm -hmm. there are a few layers to the curse one is that they have to introduce themselves by their full name every time they meet someone even if they fantastic that's fantastic i want to do that (laughs) it's really funny they're all uh cursed so that they they cannot return to oz um so they're all stuck in the the real world in our world and until the curse is broken they have to they have to you know live with us non-magical scrubs us muggles (laughs) Am I using that term properly? I didn't read that. <laughs> I didn't read Harry Potter. Sorry, guys. So the book follows Oz Diggs the seventh, who's the last in line for his family. Uh, so it is up to him to finally break the curse. What I really liked about this book is that it's sort of a a mix of the real world and Wizard of Oz lore that's already established in the original book series. Right. So like fantasy meets reality. Yeah. Um, so it has, for for multiple reasons, there's this sort of like meta quality that goes on throughout the book, which I really appreciate. I like I like stuff that's sort of self-referential. Kind yeah. Of, or, yeah, yeah. But you can you can tell that that Ron obviously has a real uh, love for the the Oz series, and he took a lot of care to uh, include not only original characters but to add some some new ones to the multiverse of the wizard of Oz. pantheon yes yeah but when it, when i was reading the book it, it there's a couple different things that it reminded me of that i i think are a good a good comparison so if you if you're into like the percy jackson series can you blank look from dece no no i know the one that like descendant of thor or uh, odin zeus yes one of the lightning guys yeah yes <laughs> sorry um so that parts of the story definitely remind me of that in that Oz has this sort of journey across America that he has to do much like Percy did in his series where he's sort of gathering power to prepare himself for this this big final fight to help break the curse once and for all. Right. Um, and there's also parts of Ron's writing that are very Lemony Snicket-esque which I really like. Although I think Lemony Snicket can sometimes go a bit overboard with his writing style. Uh, Ron doesn't do that, which I which I appreciated. Do you That's know who Lemony Snicket is? I, I am aware that there is a Netflix show based on a book. Like this is why <laughs> this is why when it comes to art, when it comes to graphic novels and stuff like that, then I'm the perfect reviewer for it. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's D and D, any of us can do it. Um, but when it comes to straight literature, it's that's you 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 have a much <laughs> wider breadth of knowledge i don't mean to to not understand the references you're making i'm sure uh-huh. loads of people will but i just yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't read Percy Jackson. <laughs> I know there was a movie. Uh huh. The movie was it. terrible. The movie was. I, I just know of it in passing. Garbage. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> Hot take. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> but I mean, those are those are pretty quality uh, novels, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They're very they're yeah, very so popular a, series. It's a good comparison then. Yeah. No. It, um. And another thing that I liked about the book is that they're. Well, well, it definitely delves into the the fantasy side of literature. It also deals with like some modern problems or modern themes that mm -hmm. you know people face today in the real world, which I think is important in children's literature to to include. You know, it doesn't get like super heavy or anything, but I think it's good to have sort of a realistic. Yeah, like touchstones to reality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this this book definitely does that, which I think is I don't think you should you know like coddle children and you know only right. give them literature that's like everything is great like you know it's it's good to have realism in your right to, to put it in perspective we're not talking like tarantino no like, no right, right. We're, yeah. <laughs> but i mean but there are like themes in it that are maybe good for kids to sort of find a, like a, a good footing mm -hmm. in reality in a fantasy hybrid yes that they're capable of kind of I mean I think that's good in all fantasy though right yeah like when we play D&D &D, when we play games like that we, we try to find themes that exist in reality to mm -hmm. base the fantasy on yeah and that helps us kind of experience it in a more accurate way which is mm -hmm. good especially for a book because I mean you assume whoever's reading this is going to spend a, a good amount of time with the characters and stuff like that it's good to have some sort of referential footing yes Throughout the book, I, I also noticed um, Ron really likes puns, which <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. I love puns. Yes, but there's there's puns throughout it. Uh, also in the book, Oz Oz Diggs the seventh, as he has to introduce himself constantly. <laughs> uh, he encounters good and bad witches, uh, hippie witches, hey. redneck elves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we know them. We know where they So there's there's a great cast of characters that Ron has created, but like I said earlier, as well as including some characters from the original Wizard of Oz series, which I don't know if a lot of people know this, but it, it is a multi-book series. It, it wasn't just the, the one. Right. Um, so if you or maybe someone you know really likes the series, this is definitely... It's it's really nice to see, you know, someone sort of expanding on the world of it, and right. maybe taking a, a new look at it. And and I mean, yeah, like I, I'm not super familiar with the uh, Oz universe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be disingenuous of me to like make a comment about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Uh -huh. And so there are a lot of books that have happened after the shows and they kind of help expand the universe and give detail into lore and backstories of characters that might have only been on screen for a moment or who were never on screen but are only referenced. And those kind of things are fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. In particular, I'm really into all of the Section 31 stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, the disavowed fucking Bashir shit. Mm -hmm. um, anyway... But we're let's, we're getting off topic. But but that's sort of what you're talking about, right? Like, yeah, how the, there is the main IP, and then these are sort of like expanded uh, side stories that kind yes. of make the universe bigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it, and it's not like a, an original character gets introduced, and you're like, who is this person? What do they do? You know, why why are these gnomes afraid of eggs? You know, like you get you get an actual explanation that Ron includes uh was, was so you're not specific? you're not lost yeah was, okay yes <laughs> now I'm curious <laughs> okay you said that the story was um but like okay so like he travels across the uh, across the country mm -hmm. and the idea being that he's got to break this curse and so um where is he traveling to so the the end point of his journey is um sort of this actual Wizard of Oz convention. Oh, cool. In like the actual real life birthplace of uh, Baum, who's the author, 
of yeah. the original Wizard of Oz series. And the when I was talking earlier about there being this sort of meta quality to the book, like it is an actual thing that happens. Like this. Classic. <laughs> so you can like cosplay and go to the event. Yes. As the character finishing his journey at the event. Yes, you absolutely could. That's very cool. <laughs> That is the, that is doubly meta. Can we talk about? I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump back, but can we talk about the puns for a minute? Sure. Can we? Can we? Can we? How often are the puns? I didn't read it, but uh-huh. but you read it. Yes. How often do the puns happen? Very frequently. Pretty pretty frequently, I would Excellent. say. There's uh, a lot of puns. There's some some wordplay. It's pretty funny. Well, excellent. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so like I would read that part and be like, Dees would appreciate this." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you would you would suggest this to who? What kind of reader would you suggest this to? Uh, I would say this would be like a a, a young adult, um, maybe like tween, which is you know early yeah. early teens. The book itself is about two hundred pages, which is pretty standard length for for that uh, reading age, but. I mean, I wasn't, I definitely wasn't bored when I was reading it. There's, there's a fair bit of action in it. You, you get a good sense of the world and these, these different characters that Oz encounters along the way. Uh, He himself isn't like, I think, I think some uh, young adult books have this problem with their, their main protagonist where they're sort of, often they can be sort of perfect and I think it's more interesting when a character is flawed and has to right. go on a journey and they sort of improve themselves through the trials and hardships that they face. And that's definitely a theme within this book is about sort of recognizing uh, maybe flaws within yourself and learning how to get better or overcome them or learning what you need in order to, you know, face hardships better in the right. world. Which I, That's a good lesson for anyone. Yeah, yeah. What would you? Who's your favorite character in the book? Do you have a favorite right off? Uh, gosh, I, I liked Ziggy. Uh, not to, um, <laughs> not to get too spoilery, but uh, Ziggy makes an appearance, which is a character from one of Ron's other books, right. which again plays into the meta quality of the story. I've actually met Ziggy. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, yeah. We was at an <laughs> event the other day, and uh, or a while ago, but mm-hmm. it, was, it was awesome. It was very cool. I don't want to spoil too much. I want to tell you who it is if you're not. But it is. It was very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm trying to. I'm trying to be vague about the terms <laughs> and with with yes. which I reference. But mm-hmm. yeah, so <laughs> it, was, it was very cool. It was very cool. But yeah, I would say there's a lot of characters and they're all very, they all definitely have like their own personalities. Like I was saying earlier, there's like hippie wizards and witches, uh, redneck elves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's cool though. I, I like the idea that this universe has taken what was good about one thing and kind of expanded it. Mm-hmm. I, I like when, when authors can do that with a good understanding of the world. Because if you don't, have a good understanding of the world and you try to expand things sometimes it falls apart it causes conflict Mm -hmm. but this seems like it it doesn't cause conflict there's a there's an actual breadth of knowledge about the topic and then expanding on it feels natural yeah as opposed to forced yeah it it definitely feels natural it feels like there's um you know things have been happening in oz since the last book and now coming up to this one you know there it hasn't it hasn't been like oh everything's been paused you know like things have been happening behind the scenes Pause. characters <laughs> is that a pun <laughs> fantastic characters have to to deal with the the repercussions of what's been happening or you know they've been dealing with this family curse that's been going on for the last seven generations cool well if that sounds like it was, it, it'd be a good buy then especially at, that's a pretty reasonable price in amazon with sales now especially christmas post christmas it'd yeah. be a good pickup absolutely um, and I would say, you know, like, uh, like Dees mentioned before, so I really, I really like to read. Um, and honestly, it's pretty easy to get the more popular stuff uh, from like, you know, Barnes and Noble or the library, or, you know, it's, it, 
you know, everybody except for Deese has read the Percy Jackson series. Uh. Everybody except for Deese has read the Lindy Snicket series of Unfortunate Events books. I really like to find, you know, maybe like lesser known artists. There's a few authors that I've been following for years and I really, uh, while well, they're not, you know, like, while I like Stephen King and other big name authors, there's other smaller authors that, you know, they definitely offer a, a, a different or more interesting perspective than maybe right. like the more mainstream authors would. And I think that that's really important when you, when you like to read or you have an appreciation of literature, really just to, to read. It's, you know, it's important to, to see different perspectives. That's cool. We'll definitely support Ron Baxley Jr. We're going to have all the links that you need in the uh, in the show notes. Yes. So if this is something you're interested in and uh, you want to take a look, then hop down there. There will be a link to the Amazon store. You can pick it up and have it shipped to your house. I'm sure Amazon's been doing it's like two-day, three-day delivery for free. Mm-hmm. So he has multiple books, too. So if it's something that you're into, you can go back and snag some of the other ones, too. Yeah. Ziggy, I want to give a shout out to Ziggy. <laughs> shout out to Ziggs. Ziggy, Ziggy's my dude. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway. All right. Thank you for uh, for reading for reading this and giving us your opinion on it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I enjoyed it. Uh, I like doing these review episodes, even though we don't get to do a lot of them. Yeah. Well, and also thank you to Ron Baxley Jr. for uh, giving us a review copy. Mm-hmm. He's a very cool guy. I know him in person. Uh, we do events all the time. We kind of sit next to each other sometimes. Very, very sweet man. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very excited to to see Ziggy last time. <laughs> I, I like because I always see pictures, but I never actually got to meet him. Uh-huh. Very, very cool. Uh, <laughs> so it's cool that he's a mystic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Was well, there anything else, Ray? Next week will be our last episode of season three. Woo! We'll a short season break we'll still have episodes right. they'll just be different from the normal freelance format and you want to give us uh, some some insight into what they are <laughs> mm-hmm. uh we have a, a very malicious dm <laughs> <laughs> it was very fun I will, I will say that okay well, thanks for <laughs> really elucidating the point <laughs> i don't know what else you want me to say if in the future, if anybody out there is interested in reviews, uh, getting a product reviewed, getting a book reviewed, getting some art reviewed, whatever, um, just feel free to drop us a line. All of the information you need to contact us is down there. If you'd like to write us an email, it's at freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on everything. We're everywhere. Super easy to contact if, uh, if that's something you're into. You would like to get something reviewed, let us know. We don't review everything. Uh, so, <laughs> so just let me preface that we don't always review everything that someone sends to us so mm-hmm. don't um you know just mail it off and then assume that it's going to be reviewed that's not how this works <laughs> but but we do appreciate uh creative types and creators and yes. if there's anything that we can do to help get the word out about a project that we think is great we want to uh let people know about it so mm-hmm. So thanks again to uh, Rachel for doing the review and for Ron Baxter Jr. for writing the book and letting us get a review copy. Uh, Anything else? Uh, No, I think that's it. Right on. Thanks for listening. Do I get to do the the tagline? I guess so. The invoice is in the mail. (laughs) 